Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica and I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today is a Q&A video. So basically the whole um, point of today's video is just to answer um, a lot of questions that I frequently get um, pretty much every day or at least a few times a week I typically get these questions. So I went ahead and I just kind of compiled, compiled, compiled them all together and I put them on this sheet right here and um, I'm just gonna go through and answer them for you guys. So um, just kind of hang out, got Birdie in the background, I'm in my PJ bottoms, and I'm just kind of, you know, hanging out, gonna answer some questions. So um, let's get right into all the questions. I believe there is about 15 or so. So the first question is, how long did it take you to start selling? Um, so I had started um, back in September of 2019. That's really when I started looking at candles as more of a business. And um, I did make some candles for my coworkers um, the previous Christmas of 2018, but when I really started to actually um, make candles and think of it more as a business was back in September. So I would say it took me about six months of testing, researching, creating, designing, and kind of gathering everything together, purchasing supplies, making candles, um, getting my Etsy store ready, everything like that it took me about six months altogether. But again, it's gonna take everybody differently. So if you're at six months and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I'm nowhere near, you know, feeling like I'm comfortable to sell, please don't feel like you have to sell. It's different for everybody. Sometimes people can do it in a month. Other people will need a year and a half or two years. It, it's really different for everybody. Um, second question is, how do I blend scents together? I get this question um, quite frequently of people asking me, how do they know how much of one scent to add to another scent or if they're blending three scents. Um, and funny enough, I actually had this question um, for the guys at California Candle Supply. I remember in the very beginning when I would go over there and I would ask them questions. And uh, one of the questions was, I was doing van vanilla and sandalwood. And I remember asking him, okay, so it's just a 50-50 ratio, right? That's how I blend in. He kind of gives me a look and I go, or is it just up to me? Like, is it just, he's like, you just gotta test. And that's my response for you guys. You just gotta test, do whatever you like. Um, if you wanna do 10% of one and 90% of another, you could do that. If you wanna do 50-50, 40-60, 47, 47, 30, 30, ooh. God, I just taught a math lesson too, 50, 47.53, you could do that as well. But I recommend just keeping it at more easy numbers. Um, but honestly, it's really just whatever you guys wanna blend together. Have fun with it. Don't try to make it so like, what's the correct answer? What's What what exactly do I need to do? Just have fun with it. Throw some scents together, but document it and see how you like it. Question number three, how long do I cure my candles for? Now, this is going to be different for everybody, um, but because I'm answering this personally for myself, um, my answer would probably be just a couple of days um, because the wax that I use doesn't really need a cure time. So, I mean, I could go maybe a couple of days. There have been times where I have made a candle overnight and I shift it the next morning. It's done totally fine. I haven't had any issues, knock on wood, um, but it's just kind of how my wax is. It doesn't really need that cure time. Um, however, I know with some people um, that are using other wax, it's really good to let it cure for about a week or two weeks and you get the best strongest scent throw so what I would recommend is whatever wax you're using just try to get in touch with other people that are using that wax um, and I highly recommend if you guys aren't already I know I talk about this a lot but I will leave a link in the description box below so you guys can go join the Facebook group it is run by Jeff Stanley and um, the, he just has like this amazing community in the Facebook group so I recommend you guys go join that so you can go check it out and then you're more than welcome to ask people um, you know what kind of wax they're using and seeing how what the cure time is or asking different questions I recommend using the search bar though because there's a lot of questions that are answered all the time so check and see if it's already been answered and then um, if it's not you're more than welcome to ask the question but that is my response to a lot of people that are reaching out to me asking me questions just because I mean I know I talk about this a lot in my videos but I I really don't know any 
thing. Like I, I do know a lot about what I have experience with and what I have, you know, worked with and the waxes I've worked with and the wicks I've worked with. And, you know, there are a lot of things that I have learned, but I am documenting my journey. I, I am nowhere near the most like amazing candle maker. I am nowhere near the best. I don't know everything. I've only worked with um, the wax I have right now and then Hobby Lobby wax. So I really don't have an extensive knowledge of all waxes. I can only give you guys the best information that I have and give you guys tips on where to find your answers and that group really helps me find my answers and um, I direct everybody to that group whenever they have questions that I can't answer instead of saying I don't know you know go figure it out I'd rather give people the tools and the the um, ability to find the answer more than just completely like hands up I I don't know so you know go figure it out so I'd rather help you guys point you guys in the right direction so definitely join that group if you have any questions on any other kinds of waxes because everybody uses so many different kinds of waxes so there's definitely a person in that group that you'll find. Question number four is where do I buy my fragrance oils from? I get this question quite a bit. So um, I would say, is it four places that I get it from? Maybe five, let me count it out. Candle Science, California Candle Supply, Virginia Candle Supply, Aztec Flaming Candle. Those are the five that I use. Um, mainly, I love the Flaming Candle. I gotta say the Flaming Candle and Candle Science stole my heart. I never used them. I never even tried them out until they reached out to me and had me try some of their scents. And I gotta say, like I totally fell in love with them and I don't know why I ever didn't try them out before. So Candle Science, Flaming Candle, are two of my top favorites. Um, California Candle Supply, honestly, like I don't know why in the beginning I was thinking, you know, oh, well, I, I don't really like their scents too much, but I use a lot of their scents in my line. And I, you know, honestly, like I, I'm starting to go back and get more scents from them because I actually really do like them a lot. Aztec, mm, it's a hit or miss for me. Um, I, I got a bunch of samples from them and I just, I wasn't a fan of a lot of them. I do like the tobacco scent that they have and I'm really glad that I'm mixing that with mahogany teakwood and I, I do like the scent that it has. I have a lemon scent that smells like absolute chemicals when I burn it in a candle, but it's really nice in a wax tart. So I use it just for my wax tarts. And um, I also have a dupe of leaves from Bath and Body Works love that one absolutely love that one so honestly i feel like it's probably just the ones that i've tried um that i haven't really liked so far if you guys have any scents that you absolutely love from aztec please leave them in the comment section below because i would love to try some like really really good aztec oils question number five what do you do when you're testing a new fragrance oil and the scent isn't strong um i would say get a second opinion so if I'm really doubting myself on a scent, um, I'll give it to a friend or I'll have my boyfriend, you know, smell it for me and tell me if he thinks it smells, it smells good, if it smells strong, mainly my one friend. So I just like to know if other people are smelling the same thing that I'm smelling or I'll walk back and forth between the living room, the hallway and the bathroom over and over again. And sometimes I'll smell it more because usually I light it in my bathroom that's usually where I test my scents and sometimes I feel like the scent is just thrown across to the other side of the bathroom like away from the door like it's just all in the other area of the bathroom so I'm like going on the other side just trying to smell it and see and it's weird sometimes I'll walk into the bathroom won't smell a thing I'll walk into the hallway smell it like super strong go into the bathroom where the candle is don't smell a thing so I don't I don't know. I feel like I have to test it a few times. I'll test it multiple times in the living room, bathroom, just multiple places in my apartment. Give it to friends. Um, tell me, I'll, I'll ask them, please tell me honestly, like, please tell me honestly if you actually like this, if it's actually strong, because I need to know. I don't need to know like a sugar-coated version of because you don't want to hurt my feelings. Just tell me if it smells good or not. That's basically what I need to know. And um, so I would say I would test it a few more times. If I feel like it's really just not strong, I. I won't use the oil and I'll look for another oil. Um, but this is only after I've already gotten my wick and my wax 
to the point where I know that they have a good throw. So if you're trying to do everything from the very beginning, it could be a multiple different um, problem because there's so many variables. So it could be the wick, it could be the wax, it could be the fragrance oil. There's so many different variables in it. So you have to kind of determine what it is in the beginning. And um, if you already have it down, like I do, you already have your wax and your wicks down and it's just the fragrance oil, it's probably just the fragrance oil. So I would just switch it up, try out a different one, try out something from a different company um, or go with, you know, a, a different version of it. Like if it's lavender and I don't like that one, I'll do lavender and sage or lavender vanilla or something to kind of have a different approach to it, a different oil and go from there. Question number five, what kind of marketing are you doing? Nothing. I'm not doing anything right now. I made that whole video on marketing and I just like whoop over my head just completely haven't sat down and done that. My mind is just in so many different places of what I want to do right now. And um, yeah, I have not done any type of paid advertising yet. Um, I do advertise here on YouTube. Obviously, this is my whole channel. So I do get um, a lot of sales from you guys, which love you guys so much. Um, appreciate you guys more than anything. So I, I do appreciate that a lot. Um, I love to put a ton of hashtags on my Instagram posts. Um, I plan on doing Facebook and um, Instagram ads, but video. So I plan on doing video ads. And I think the reason why I haven't done it yet is because I just, I don't know what to do. And I'm thinking over and over in my head, well, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do this. I don't know if I should just sit here and just be like, Hey guys, um, my name's Erica and I make homemade candles. Here's my candles. Here's the story behind them. And if you guys want to purchase them, click on the link. I honestly might just end up doing that just like super cash. Um, I don't know if that's going to work. It's just a matter of testing. So, uh, when it comes to marketing, there's so many different things that you can do and that you need to focus on. Um, I'm going to be focusing on video marketing as soon as I figure out what to do. Um, and I know I told you guys I need to make a TikTok and um, yeah, I still need to do that. And then with Etsy, the one reason why I am wanting to stick with Etsy right now and not on Shopify is because I have gotten a lot of um, organic reach with Etsy of people just purchasing that aren't subscribers that haven't seen my YouTube videos and they're just purchasing because they found me on Etsy. And I work um, pretty hard on my, on my SEO with Etsy to try to rank my listings a little bit higher. Um, there's one of my candles that on a not so popular search term, it's on the front page. So that was pretty cool to see. And that's why I'm kind of on Etsy right now and I haven't switched over to my own website, uh, but eventually I will want to. But as of right now, that's the only marketing I'm doing right now is just YouTube and then uh, working on SEO for Etsy. So I still have a lot to work on. Okay, question number seven is, um, where do you get your label printer? Now, every time you guys ask me this question, I have one response and one thing that comes to my mind. Do you mean shipping labels or candle labels? I don't know which one you guys are meaning. Um, so I'm going to talk about both. So I use a Dymo Label Writer 4XL printer for my shipping labels. And that is the shipping labels that you purchase and prepay for, and then you put it onto your box, your packages, and you ship them out to the customer. Now the label printer is meant to um, not use any ink, so you don't have to purchase ink for it. You just have to purchase the um, sticker rolls essentially and it's just a basically a giant sticker so it prints out the label right into the giant sticker you peel it off and put it onto the package and um, you prepay for it at home and you don't have to worry again about buying ink or anything it uses heat to imprint it onto the label and that's all you basically have to do it's pretty easy i've used it for a couple years now with my ebay packages so i just already had it as i opened up my etsy shop you definitely don't need to get it you can use just a regular printer regular inkjet or um, laser printer with white paper to print out your labels you don't have to get anything fancy that's just what i use and then for my um, candle labels i do use a inkjet printer and i use a canon pixma um, i believe it's the ts 
3100 series. I believe that's what it is. It's an older model, an older version of the Canon PIXMA printers. And at first, when I was asked this question, I didn't want to answer because I didn't think that my printer was really up to par with some of the newer printers that are out there. I got a few years ago, so I know that there's a lot, you know, a lot better printers out there, but it works really well for me. My labels come out really nice. Um, I don't necessarily know if you can get that version anymore, but I feel like there are probably some other like higher end versions that you can get. Um, Johnny from Online Labels, which is the guy that I worked with, with their um, video, the collaboration video I did with them. And um, he had recommended a printer on the Facebook group that I'm a part of with him. And he had recommended a printer that was a Canon PIXMA printer. He also said that Inkjet will give you the best quality, which I found interesting. So he works for Online Labels. He knows all about labels and label printing. So I want to take his advice. And if I ever do need another printer, I will probably go with that one. Um, I'm going to look it up again on which printer he recommended. And then I will link it in the description box below if you guys are interested in checking out like the Canon PIXMA printers if you're looking for one. Um, but that's just what I use. So I hope that answers your guys' question on the label printers that I use. Question number eight, how do you print out your candle labels? Um, I print them out at home on that printer and I'm able to use online labels labels. So basically what I do is I go to onlinelabels.com and I purchase their blank label. So it's basically a blank sticker and you are printing onto that sticker, which becomes the candle label. So I purchase all the blank labels and I print everything out here at home. So I use the design software, their uh, Maestro label design. So I use their design software, their Maestro label designer, and I design everything at home, print it out at home, and then put it right onto my candle. I haven't had any issues. The only issue that I did have was with their weatherproof labels. I didn't like them. They were smudgy and I just, that was my experience with them so I just went back to the white glossy and they worked really well so far question number nine how do you fix sinkholes or cracks on your wax um I don't have experience with that so every time I get asked a question if I don't have experience with it I'm not gonna try to BS an answer and try to you know throw something together I will tell you guys straight up I don't have experience with that I'm just documenting what I know and I will gladly direct you guys to somebody who has more experience. So check out Jeff Stanley's videos on how to fix sinkholes and cracks in your wax and how to smooth out the tops. He has more videos on that than I ever could. Maybe one of these days when I'm testing out more kinds of waxes, um, I will have a greater knowledge and a greater expansion of experience when it comes to actually um, you know, dealing with those problems. But as of right now, my wax doesn't give me those issues. So I highly recommend go check out his channel, his videos, um, search it up on YouTube. I'm sure he will be one of the first ones that pop up. Question number 10, do you include shipping in the price of your candles or do you charge separately? So I was trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm so used to, especially on eBay, I always charge shipping. I never include it in the price, but for Etsy, I just, felt like it was going to be easier for me to just include it in the total price and charge um, and not charge shipping, um, have free shipping on all of my items. So that's what I did. So basically what I did was I went through and I figured out how much it was going to cost to ship one candle and I charged um, a flat fee for all of my candles. So I basically add $7 to what the cost typically is when I sell locally for my candles. I charge $7 on top of it. And for my wax melts, I charge $3 on top of it. So typically my candles, I will sell locally for 22. So I charge 29 for them. And then the same thing with my wax melts, typically charge $5 and I charge $8 total. No type of um, extra shipping cost for anybody. It just, whatever it is, is what it's gonna be plus tax, you know how that goes. But um, I just like that concept a little bit better, just knowing that it was going to be a flat rate. And no, if you guys are wondering, not all the time will the shipping add up to the right amount that I add on there. Sometimes it costs anywhere from eight to $11 to ship out a candle and I'm only charging them seven. I'm okay with that. 
it's not the end of the world for me because a lot of times people do purchase multiple items so that adds in more of the shipping cost and it will all even out in the end so sometimes people will end up spending a total of 10 or 13 dollars or 14 dollars on shipping and um, it saves me a little bit money there when on another order it costs me a little bit more to ship out that order so for me it works if you guys want to do it a different way completely up to you but that's just how i like to do it Question number 11 is a question I have gotten so many times and I am working on a video for this, you guys. I um, definitely want to look more into this. And that question is, how do you ship candles in the summer? So many people have asked me this question and I don't know, I have no idea. This is gonna be the first summer that I'm gonna be shipping out candles. So I will let you guys know once I figure out what works for me and if I'm even having issues with candles melting in the summer, I know that temperatures are rising. I live in Southern California and it's 90 something degrees today. So I'm in thinking more about, okay, well, are my candles gonna melt during shipment? What am I gonna do to prevent this? And what I have been doing is I've been looking on Uline.com and they have these little cold packs that you can get. And I'm looking into getting those and trying them out. So you freeze them and then you put them in with the candles when you ship them. I'm gonna just look into them and see exactly, you know, if I think it's going to work for me. There's also some insulated bubble wrap that you can get. So I'm looking into that as well. Um, again, it's gonna be all trial and error for me and just to see exactly what I feel is gonna work best. But I promise I will let you guys know once I figure it out myself. Question number 12, what do you do about frosting? So I am pretty lucky that I'm using jars that are matte black, so I don't have to deal with frosting or wet spots on my actual candles. However, with my wax melts, I do. And to be completely honest with you guys, if it's just a little bit of frosting, I honestly, I don't care. I've never gotten a complaint. I've never gotten anybody asking, why do you have these white marks on your candle melts? I've never had anybody ask me that before. Granted, I've only been selling for a little over a month, but still, I haven't got anybody complaining yet. And if it's really bad, I personally get, I, I, I don't like it. So what I'll do is I'll take them out of the clamshell molds and I'll melt them back down in the pitcher and I'll add a little bit more wax to it to try to take the color down and also to um, make sure that I'm just, I don't know, adding some wax that hasn't ever been melted. I don't know if this does anything, but just adding like the wax that hasn't been melted to a high like a higher temperature because I feel like the frosting comes from me just heating that up a little bit too high so I'll melt it down to just melted and then I'll go and pour it back in the tart molds sometimes I'll still get that frosting other times it'll take down most of it I just know that frosting is a natural process of soy and I use all soy products in my candles and my tart wax so it is what it is I'm not going to stress over it i'm not going to lose my mind over it um the one thing that i am starting to slowly switch over though to is to make most of my wax melts um colorless and that helps to take down the frosting pretty much like entirely i don't get any frosting on my colorless wax melts you can't even tell uh, I can only tell on the ones that I put dye in. So that's definitely something to consider as well if you guys don't wanna have frosty on your wax melts. Maybe don't add color to it. If you do wanna add color to it, then just play around with the temperatures of your wax. Um, call the person, the company that you purchased the wax um, from and just ask them, hey, I've been getting a lot of frosting, what do you suggest? It's ne It never hurts to reach out to companies and ask them questions. Um, I feel like they're used to that and they don't mind answering for you guys. So that is my recommendation for you guys in regards to frosting on your candles. Question number 13, where should I start? Um, I feel like a lot of people get overwhelmed because they start to look up all this information. And I know that I did in the beginning. I'm a very like information sponge. I love to just, when I get an idea, I will suck up any type of information that I possibly can multiple times. I mean, I will watch it over and over and over again. And with the candle community, as you guys know, there's not a lot of us on YouTube. There's really not. 
So when you find any information, you just want to suck it all up. And I totally get that. And even when I was searching for information on, on candles, there's a few YouTubers out there and a few, you know, people giving out information, but there wasn't a lot. So I just had to take a lot of it into my own hands and just really research. I mean, Google is your best friend. When you guys have a question, when you guys are looking for something, Google seriously is like my soulmate. It's it, it's everything. I don't know what I would do without Google. It it just it's it's everything to me. So, I would spend tons of hours just researching on Google of just how do I do this? Where do I get this? Where do I buy this? Where do I, you know, suppliers for this? I I just was looking up everything and what I would recommend for you guys to do is Spend some time researching on your own, ask other people questions, join Facebook groups, watch YouTube videos, and purchase a starter kit and go from there. And see if you like making candles and see if you enjoy the process and and learn to just have fun. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know how to put it, you guys. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people jump into it and they just wanna go like straight to I want to open up a candle business and I, I want to, you know, I've never made candles, but I want to, I want to have a candle business and that's really exciting and, and that's really fun. But I want you guys to enjoy the process of actually making candles first, you know, and that will really bring out if you guys want to make it a business or not, because the worst thing for you guys to do is jump into this business and then realize that you hate making candles. And then it's all just like so frustrating for you. And I, I just feel like take your time, do some research, get a starter kit, have fun with it and go from there. And you know, just document some things down. If you guys have some like fun names that you wanna do for a candle business or anything, document that and just kinda of go from there. I feel like I'm rambling on this, but I could talk about this topic for forever. But just get a starter kit and go from there. Gosh, this is gonna be a long video. Sorry guys. Hopefully you guys like longer videos. Leave it in the comment section below if you guys like longer videos. Cause me personally on YouTube, I love longer videos. When I see that somebody has a video that's over 20 minutes long, I get super stoked. So let me let me know, let me know how you guys feel about that. Um, question number 14, how do you determine how much wax a jar will hold? So I did make a video on this months ago and I will leave a card right here up at the top if you guys wanna know in detail kind of the little formula that I came up with at the time to how to determine how much wax a jar will hold. But if you guys want to know just a simple, easy answer, Grab the jar, as in, this is the jar, it's empty. Put it on the scale, tear it, meaning it'll be set back to zero, so anything that you put inside of it will be the net weight of that contents, not including the weight of the jar. Pour in the wax, don't wait with, don't um, use water because water doesn't weigh as much as wax. So you're going to put wax in there and you're going to fill it up till the part that you want it to be filled up to. So if there's a fill line, you can fill it up to there. If there's no fill line, fill it up to as high as you want that candle to be full. Read the scale, that's how much wax can, can fit in your jar. So that's the easiest way to go about it. If you guys wanna watch that video, go for it. I talk more about like this little formula that I, that I came up with and how to determine how much wax and fragrance oil and all that. So go ahead and watch that video. Um, but that's basically the simple answer for you guys. Question number 15, how do you determine how, uh, the percentage of fragrance oil to use? So how do you choose 8%, 9%, 11%, 10%? 6%, um, it's all personal preference. So so many of these answers, I feel like it's just personal preference for you guys. So if you make a candle and you're using six or 7% and you're like, okay, well, I would like to have a little bit more fragrance out of this, then bump it up and keep testing. When I first started making candles, I swore that I was only gonna do 8% and now I do about 10.5%. So it really just depends on the wax you're using, um, how strong you want the candle to be, uh, what kind of fragrance oils you're using and how much that needs. Some fragrance oils don't need as much as others. I have some that I should probably take down the fragrance oil, but because I have my calculations so like 
put in place. It's hard for me to think of doing anything else, but there are a couple of them that I could probably save some fragrance oil and it would have the same um, throw to it with a little bit less fragrance oil because they're just super strong. So just keep testing, do um, one candle, keep everything the same except for the fragrance load. So if you're testing with one scent, do 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, and just check and see what what is a good um you know fragrance throw for you what what has a really good scent if 10 might smell the same as eight and you're like okay well maybe if i can get away with saving two percent fragrance oil i could just keep it at eight and always go with the manufactured recommended amount of fragrance oil don't go over and don't always think that more fragrance oil means that it's going to be better because you don't want to end up using too much have it seep out the top um have it you know become a flammable can candle because there's fire and having so much oil that it just becomes you know the whole candle is set on fire because of it we don't want that so just make sure that you're reading about whatever is recommended for your wax that you're using a lot of times the fragrance load goes up to about 10 to 12 percent depending on the wax that you're using with container wax it's a little bit less with tart wax you can hold a little bit more depending on what you're using so i would just read through the directions on that to determine the um a good range that you should start trying out what percentage to use for your candles question number 16 there's three questions left so question number 16 is what size labels do you use for your candles? I get this question all the time. So I use the same size labels for my smaller jars, which are out of stock right now, um, my large jars and my tart melts. I use 2.2 inches by 2.83 inches and I get them from online labels. Question number 17, where do I get my shipping boxes? So I get my shipping boxes um, from Uline and um, I will leave a link in the description box. I will have everything in the description box that I mentioned in today's video, so you guys can go check out all the links to everything that I'm talking about. But I get all of my shipping boxes from there. There's a bunch of different places you can. Some people say Uline's way too expensive and they get them from other places. For me right now that I'm still just learning and kind of trying to find the best places to buy everything, Uline is perfect for me. As of right now, I'll probably find a better supplier later on, but as of right now, it's really good. Um, you can also get free boxes boxes, free um, USPS priority boxes from USPS.com and um, you guys are able to order some free boxes if those are the boxes that you end up wanting to ship your candles in. So there's a bunch of different options for you guys, but as of right now, I'm just using Uline. Question number 18, what size do I market my candles as? So let me explain this one. So a lot of times I see people marketing their candles by the size of the jar, as in the volume of the jar. So if I have a, you know, for instance, I'll use mine. So my larger jars are 13.5 ounce jars. I would not market them as 13.5 ounce candles. So I will leave a link so you guys can go check it out again, but it is to the FTC um, labeling guidelines essentially. So it's like the consumer goods labeling, whatever it is. Um, it's basically showing you what you need to label and market your products as and candles are a part of that. Candles are consumer goods. So we will have to abide by what the FTC um, is telling us to do in regards to labeling. So when you are labeling your candles, you have to label it by net weight of wax because candles are solid. If candles came in a liquid form, we'd be able to market it as volume, but because they are solid, we have to market it as net weight. So that's why my 13 0.5 ounce jars are marketed and labeled as 9.5 ounce candles because that is the net weight that fills the candles up to the point where I have my fill line. So I always recommend to everybody, make sure you're marketing it as the weight and not as the volume of the container because not only do you legally have to do that, but also we don't want to be telling people that the candle is bigger than it is you know, just this whole thing. So I always recommend just making sure you are labeling it by weight. And that is it for today's video. We are at almost 50 minutes of filming right now. So I got some editing to do. And I really hope you guys liked today's video and that you liked just kind of having all these questions answered in one video. And if you guys have any more questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. As well as if you guys do have any specific questions that you want to ask me, please DM me on Instagram. It is the 
the easiest way for me to get back to you guys. Um, try not to message me on my Etsy store, on my Etsy shop, just because I like to keep that separate from my actual you know, customers when they have questions on the products and everything. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I really don't mind answering them to the best of my ability, as best as I can. There's some questions that I just can't answer, um, but I would be happy to do the best I can and make sure you um, ask me that on Instagram. So um, yeah, I think that is gonna be it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at MemoryBoxScandalCo. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.